than 30. All right. Would y'all stand as we do our Pledge of Allegiance tonight? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Would you stand as we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time we have together tonight to discuss the business of our school and our community and our students. We just pray for guidance in all these decisions that come before us and seek your blessing. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. It is 7.30, so we'll call the meeting to order at 7.30. Trent, do you want to do our students? Absolutely. We're going to start off with our uh, students of the month. Why don't we start with the elementary? Okay, we have two students from the elementary, and I'm going to have Caleb come on ahead up. Let's you stand up here front and center. Caleb is in Mrs. Wall's class, and I'm going to read what Mrs. Wall wrote for his nomination for Student of the Month. Caleb is a student that excels in the classroom in his attitude and his work ethic. He works hard on assignments and turns them in on time. He is aware of his classmates and is happy to help them without ever being asked. Caleb is a great friend to all of those around him. He will often be in the center helping others work through problems. He is very calm and kind and is able to reason with those students that might struggle. Caleb is eager to learn and shows excitement in learning multiplication. I look forward to watching Caleb grow and know that he will do such great things. Room 16 is very blessed to have Caleb be a part of our room. And Macy Hawkins. Macy is in Mrs. Scott's third grade class, and from Mrs. Scott, Macy is an excellent friend, student, and classmate. She does all of her work to the best of her ability and even helps those around her without ever being asked. She keeps her area neat and organized and sets a great example for everyone around her. Recently in math, we have been learning about multiplication, and Macy has begun to try to mul multiply, to try multiple digit multiplication. In writing, we created monsters and wrote stories about them. Macy's story included a monster from Africa with great dialogue, a lot of detail, and what her monster looked like and the trouble that it got into. On Fridays, Macy participates in Genius Hour and is researching how people communicated in the past to create a presentation to share with the whole class. We are so very lucky to have Macy be a part of Room 14 this year. Macy Hawkins. Thank you, Mr. George. We'll move on to the middle, middle school. All righty. For the middle school, we're going to start with Adriana Swango. You're not nervous, are you? Okay, good. All right. Had two teachers write things about you here from your grades. So here we go. We're going to start. Adriana has been doing great in all of her classes. She goes above and beyond to make sure she does well in her classes. She is always courteous to teachers and other students. Keep up the good work. And one more. Adriana is one of the most hardworking young ladies that we have in eighth grade. She works very hard in her classes and strives to do the best she can. She may be quiet, but she is mighty. Keep it up, Adriana. Your eighth grade teachers are very excited to see what your future holds. And you know what I appreciate about you? You're nice to everybody, and you're not into drama ever. Four years going, and I appreciate that. Congrats. All right, and next we have Owen Arnett. All right, you ready? Okay. Owen's in seventh grade. The seventh grade team would like to nominate Owen Arnett for Student of the Month. He is such a wonderful student to have in class, always hardworking, always polite, always engaged, always has a positive attitude, and always respectful. Owen is nice to other kids, 
and just a great person to be around. We appreciate his hard work this year. And Owen, personally, I appreciate seeing your smile every day. That makes me smile. So I appreciate you. Big hand for Owen Arnett, please. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Alt. Ready for the high school. Good evening. We are going to start with Lance Perry. I don't believe that I did not see him in the crowd. So um, let me just kind of read what, uh, uh, what was said about him. I uh, got a, uh, an email from Miss Provo. Lance is fun to have in class, and I have enjoyed getting to know, know him. He greets me every morning and always has something entertaining to tell me. He's improving his cooking skills, and he has his dishwashing down. Um, and I can say, uh, you know, I was recently in a, a meeting with him and, and uh, Mr. Ray, and there's something to be said about his demeanor, very quiet, very shy, down to business. Um, uh, it, he's just a, a wonderful kid to be around, and so I really do appreciate that, because uh, like, like the previous student, he is not about the drama, so um, just really appreciate, really appreciate him. So, Lance Perry. My next student is Miss Hazel Thomas Wielden. I'll, I'll try, I will try not to embarrass you too much, okay? <laughs> All right, so uh, Mr. Childress writes, uh, Hazel has shown tremendous growth both during this school year and last year. She is diligent and hardworking, not afraid to ask questions, and willing to help her classmates. Mr. Hartman uh, writes, uh, Hazel has shown dedication to growing, and her effort in class has been amazing. She has sh shown that she can do hard things and has shown a lot of maturity when it comes to handling, handling those hard things. Her commitment to growth is an example to all of our students at Eastern Green. And last but not least, Mr. Abel uh, writes, uh, Hazel has been very consistent in class. She has gotten things in on time and listens intently during, during class. I've also noticed that Hazel's attitude has been uh, positive lately as well. And I, I have to brag a little bit about Miss Hazel here because um, I was first introduced to her, was it last spring, right? She actually came over early. She had a lot of anxiety about being at the high school, was absolutely certain that she was not going to like it, right? <laughs> and uh, I've really enjoyed, uh, I start my day almost every day with her coming up and saying hi. So I just want to let you know that uh, I, I appreciate you uh, very much. And uh, I better make sure I give you this. So congratulations. <laughs> Well, thank you to the principals for all, and the teachers that nominated them for all those kind words, and thank you family members that could join us tonight. Um, you are more than welcome to stay for the rest of the meeting. However, you don't have to. I know you oftentimes have, still have to get uh, homework done and eat and all that stuff, so if you feel like leaving, feel free to leave at this time. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. I know. Well, next up, it didn't make the agenda, and that's my fault, but uh, Mr. Kirkendall is going to do a presentation on uh, high school graduation requirements and more specifically high school pathways. We've talked about this a couple board meetings in a row through different means, and the board decided, why doesn't he do a, a presentation on this? Because we've mentioned it, but we haven't really went into detail on it. So he's going to grace us with a, with a presentation tonight. Didn't have to say anything, and <laughs> they, all, they all took off. <laughs> um, so yes, I wanted to kind of give a little bit more information about uh, our, our, our graduation requirements. Um, and it's one of those things that uh, when most of us were in high school, we had a very simple requirement. It was the 40, 40 credits. Uh, and once we had that done, we were good. We got our diploma, we moved on, we went to the workforce, college, military, trade school, whatever. Uh, about five years ago, the state actually changed the requirements. And um, for your viewing pleasure, I gave all of you guys uh, slides of what, what you're going to see. Um, there are now three buckets 
that all of our graduates have to, uh, have to fulfill. Of course, we have the diploma designation. Uh, that is going to be your 440, your academic honors, your technical honors, and general diplomas. Uh, but they've also added two other buckets. One is uh, identified as employability skills, and uh, there will be a slide a little bit that explains that. And then also at the post-secondary ready uh, competencies. Um, this bucket is oftentimes fulfilled by um, uh, passing tests or uh, our CTE concentrators, which we're gonna talk about here a little bit later, because that is the pathways that we've uh, been able to uh, create. Uh, having an honors diploma, uh, that will also fulfill that, uh, that, that requirement as well. So right up here, uh, the basic core 40, um, 40, the state requires 40 total credits uh, from a variety of content areas, uh, predominantly English and math and science and social studies. And then of course you have your, uh, your direct uh, electives, your other electives, PE, health. Um, and so for us, we have our requirement which is uh, locally designated, is 43 credits. So an Eastern Green student needs 43 credits to, pat, to graduate with a core 40 diploma. If a student wants to graduate with academic honors or technical honors, uh, then they need to have 47 credits. And those additional credits uh, with, with the honors and the technical honors, uh, they have additional specific requirements um, predominantly either in the uh, career pathway classes or additional foreign language classes that they have to have to fulfill. So that bucket two that uh, that I was talking about, the employability skills, uh, it has three different types of experiences that a graduate must uh, must uh, successfully complete. They do not have to do all three, they just need to select one. Uh, one is a project-based experience, and this could be a, um, a project or a portfolio uh, that uh, could be presented um, to, uh, to teachers or to um, possible employers, something of that nature. Um, we have service-based experiences. These, uh, these Experiences include sports, volunteering, uh, music classes, band, uh, orchestra, uh, choir, things of that nature, community service projects, uh, and it's really kind of focused on the extracurricular uh, participation. And then last but not least, we also have work-based experiences. These are gonna be internships. Uh, they can be paid or unpaid. Um, FFA uses, uh, can also qualify with their summer summer experiences. Um, so those pro you have project, service, and work-based experiences. All all students need to have at least one of one of these. All right. If I have not muddied it already uh, yet, I'm going to now because it it's kind of like a, a giant bowl of spaghetti. You never know where, where it stops and where it ends. On top of the employability skills and the credits, each student must have what we call a pathway. For about 40% of our students, slightly under 40%, most of them last year were able to complete their pathway um, by having an academic honors diploma. Uh, that right in itself kind of took care of that requirement and we were able to kind of move on and, and check that box. There was another group of students who passed the ASVAB, which is the, the military entrance exam. Uh, doesn't necessarily mean that they're going into the military, but all seniors take that. And so if they scored a 31 or above, that qualified them for, for that requirement and we were able to check that box. There are a lot of students who utilize uh, our CTE concentrator pathways. And I will show you our pathways here in just a second. Um, but for the most part, um, 
we actually have a, a we have, I want to say, five or six currently on campus, and the remainder of our pathways are actually at Hoosier Hills. These are going to be classes like auto, auto body, um, ag, um, let's see, uh, I am blanking, uh, culinary, um, let's see, uh, we have a, an art pathway. Um, so all of, all of those are, are pathways that we are able to kind of utilize and kind of focus, uh, focus their career aspirations and, and utilize those experiences in that way. Um, one of the things that I've been working on, um, my, myself, Ms. Willie, and uh, a couple of teachers, Mr. Childress and Ms. Engel, uh, have been working on is actually uh, developing our our pathway opportunities. So I mentioned earlier that we have roughly about five or six pathways right now. We will actually be moving to about 11 pathways uh, next year with the addition of a education careers pathway, a pre-nursing pathway, and then also an engineering pathway. Um, with these additional pathways, we're hoping that we are able to um, speak to the interests of our students. And, and really kind of uh, give them some of the skills uh, that they need to be successful out in the workforce. Um, not everyone is, like, not everyone's ready to go to college right out, right out of high school. Some people wanna go into the workforce and, and so we wanna be able to kind of give them those, those skills and those opportunities to, to be successful. Um, so these are the pathways uh, that we are gonna be talking about, or that I was talking about earlier. Um, the one correction I need to make is it's not going to be civil engineering. It will actually be computer integrated um, engineering. Right. And then last but not least, um, all of this, uh, these additional pathways have been, uh, have been, we've been able to do this because of our 3E grant that was awarded. Um, we were awarded back in September, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, we were actually we actually were able to kind of double dip a little bit where because um, we were signed up for this grant in two separate uh, writings. Uh, one writing was through uh, Indiana State University, and that will allow us to get our pre-nursing pathway through them. And then uh, the other writing allowed us to go through uh, the Southern Indiana Educational Center um, down in Jasper, uh, where we will be doing an, doing engineering in our education pathway. So um, the money that we have been awarded through SIEC um, is designed specifically to go to the engineering pathway because there's a lot of uh, equipment and things of that nature that we need to, um, to get and, and to update. So hopefully that uh, Hopefully I did not make it worse, um, but uh, that is, um, those, are, those are the requirements. It's no longer just the, the 40 credits like I, like I was used to. It's, it's now additional, an additional, two additional buckets, so, all right. It has already gone, in, gone into effect, yes. Um, we actually have started really focusing on pathway uh, integration uh, last year um, and then more this year and we're hoping that it will uh, will be even more integrated next year depends on the kid um, I would say that there's a good portion of them that that understand it and maybe not their freshman year, but their sophomore, sophomore, junior year, they've kind of identified what they want uh, as far as careers uh, and, and kind of their, their passions. And so uh, we have, uh, you know, right now, like for instance, we utilize Hooter, Hoosier Hills uh, and we have a lot of kids r right about their junior year that will go up there and begin their, their pathways. Um, we have several students who are working towards, uh, towards industry certifications uh, CN CNA uh, type stuff, uh, auto body, and auto uh, certifications and things of that nature up there. What's the flexibility like? I'm thinking college majors people change all the time. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. Great question, great question. Um, there is some flexibility. Uh, so for instance, if I'm a, if I'm a freshman and I decide I want to do um, culinary arts, I can sign up for that, for that class my freshman year. Maybe it might not be for me. And my sophomore year, I, I, can, I can change it to a different one. And let's say my sophomore year, I decided to do engineering, and I am not an engineer. Um, it's really probably about your, your junior year in which you really need to kind of have something locked in um, if this is the route that you want to go. Um, you are able, each pathway is three classes, so you are able to take some of those requirements um, um, concurrently. So. And that? You can't switch, no, not through the semester. You will still earn a credit for that class, and if you don't use that as a pathway, it would become an elective, an elective credit, which would still fulfill for your requirement. Now, I, I, say, I say all this, and something that I probably should also just remind everybody is, a good portion of our, our kids don't utilize a C CTE concentrator. Right. Some of them will pass the SAT. Some of them will have the academic honors diploma. Those in themselves are also pathways. Mm -hmm. So we're just trying to create as many opportunities and, uh, for our students to where they, they have some, some interests and, and, and classes that they love going to that they can see themselves actually building a career out of. This is actually helping us in a couple different ways. It's fulfilling a couple things. Number one, it's giving kids other ways to graduate, but it's also helping us to provide some classes for kids that are motivated that know they're going to go on to college and hey, I'm going to be a nurse so they can get some of these classes that hopefully are going to have um, credit in college at some point for them. So yeah, the, the whole thing of being locked in, it's only, only people that are going to use this as a pathway are going to get locked in at some point um, yeah. of having to choose something to, to get their graduation requirements because there's so many different other ways to, to graduate. And <clears throat> a little bit more about the 3E grant. Um, that was money that was coming from the state. Um, the state's really pushing um, career pathways through workforce development. Um, so this is something that the state's really <clears throat> wanting to get high schools on board with to, to help kids start figuring out, you know, if, if I'm not going to go to college, what else, what else do I want to do? Do I want to go directly into the workforce? And if so, <clears throat> are there ways high school can prepare them more for, for the workforce? So we actually are one of, <clears throat> I think, six schools through the SIEC that are getting money from this, from this grant. There's five others other than us and <clears throat> I'm not even sure through ISU how many people ended up getting sure. money they didn't really talk to us about that I just know we were one of them so yeah it's gonna gonna be some needs it's kind of exciting to try to plan for this stuff and, and we we selected uh, the pre-nursing pathway and the engineering pathway because <clears throat> from our yep. student surveys that is what they were interested in the most um, on top of that you know we also kind of surveyed uh, our neighboring schools we wanted to be competitive but we didn't want to offer the same things that they offer because then uh, <clears throat> then kind of compete directly directly with them. Yeah. Um, I know WRV has, I want to say, about 12 or 13 pathways. Uh, Linton uh, last year had about 17 pathways. Um, and um, Spencer Owen um, has, has about, I want to say, 15, if I remember correctly. So it's been a while since I've... Uh, called, called them and stuff, but um, w we wanted to be at competitive with our with our neighboring school districts, and um, I just didn't feel like we were we were as competitive with just five or six pathways. So yep. we wanted we wanted to up our offerings. So. I mean, I know I can jump in on one. I, I know, you know, being a smaller corporation, you have to look at how you can readjust um, staffing sometimes, mm -hmm. and use people to the best of their ability. And and so we've had we started to have conversations yeah. with people of 
hey, I, we're going to need you to possibly teach this. Or, and, and actually, sometimes it hasn't even been us going to them. We start mentioning it, and they get excited about, well, I, that's in my field. I can teach that. So that's one big, I wouldn't say it's a negative. It's just something we have to always look at. We're a smaller corporation, so we, w without adding staff, we have to try to figure out who's teaching what and that sort of thing. To, to, your, to your question, I would say scheduling. Um, being so small, you know, a lot of these are singletons, and so uh, singleton classes, and so um, trying to create a schedule to where everyone gets what they need and uh, a little bit of what they want. And um, I am fortunate that I have <laughs> uh, Miss Willie because she kind of she kind of looks at it and like, oh, we can do this. All right. Okay, that that. So that was going to take me a couple of days. <laughs> so um, I know that uh, you know one of the things that uh, you know we're in some of our our elective classes is being able to meet the number of students in, in class in classes, making sure that they have classes that are going to run. Um, and I'm I'm confident that we are able to do that. Uh, where we've subtracted, we've tried to eliminate. Um, not uh, not as popular social studies electives, um, some, some science electives that weren't as popular, um, and then also utilize the like Mr. Provo said, utilize the same staff uh, for for some of these pathways. Uh, so, for instance, a uh, perfect example is Mr. Childress. Next next year, he'll be math teacher and engineering. Miss Engel is going to be science and. Um, the environmental sustainability, um, you know, here in, in our couple of years when that one runs. So, um, Mr. Zapata um, is, I think, going to probably uh, teach art and um, what the, the beginning of our education pathway. So, um, utilizing the people that we have um, and, and playing to their strengths um, has, has been, has kind of required us to be kind of ride that, ride that fine line. Yes, yes, yes they do. Um, fortunately, um, I believe most everybody meets those requirements already. It's just a matter of having it added onto the license. <coughs> All right, anything else? All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Kirkendall. No, I think that's it. Ready for yeah, participation. All right. Uh, we offer participation at our board meeting, so if anyone has anything they'd like to speak about this evening uh, on the agenda, the floor is yours. Don't everybody jump up at once? All right, we will move on. <clears throat> First on the board is the adoption of the agenda for the November 14th, 2022 meeting uh, to be approved as presented with additions, corrections, deletions. Trent, anything that we need to go over other than what we have in front of us? Nope. Okay. Need a motion? Martha? Second? Sharon? All those four? Past six zero. It is recommended that the minutes from the October 17th meeting be approved as presented. We all have those. Uh, need a motion for that? Natalie? Second? Martha? All those four? You weren't here. Okay. Passes five zero and one abstention. Next up is the <coughs> approval of claims, numbers 15330 through what's our latest? 15512. And we received claims info today as well in our emails. Uh, any questions about those? No? Uh, I For those in the audience, they're talking about we switched over 
Um, it's still CompuTrol, but it's a web-based system now instead of the old DOS version, which some of you probably aren't even old enough to know what DOS is. Um, but yeah, it's much more user-friendly and the reports that come out are much easier to yes. read. <laughs> much better. <laughs> All right, need a motion for approval of claims? Scott? Do you need a second? Sharon? All those four? Passes, six, zero? Okay, it's All right. time for me, isn't it? First thing, we'd start off with some very good, good stuff here. That's the teacher contract ratification. So I'm recommending to the board that we ratify the 22-23 collective bargaining agreement. Um, there is a resolution I'm going to read here. It's a little bit different now um, with the way the state's wanting us to do some things. But I want to start off by saying, um, first of all, it was a very good and it has been every year I've been here. We, we have very good contract negotiations. Um, we both come to the table with our best foot forward and uh, we want what's best for everybody involved and, and that's not always the way it is. I've been in some corporations where it's much different. It's kind of very adversarial and it's never been that way here and I don't plan it that it ever will be that way. But um, I wanna thank the EGTO and especially Jill and Amy and the other officers um, for their willingness to, to work through everything. And um, I think we met, oh, it take us three meetings? Yeah, yeah. three meetings. And, and really that was um, just trying to get some things hammered out, really. Um, so thank you to EGTO. I want to thank um, the board and especially Scott. Scott set in on all the negotiations with me. I want to thank Susan Trainer, who is the board's attorney. She always helps us with negotiations. Thanks to um, Nancy Guyett, who is the ISTA rep for us. Uh, she's wonderful to work with too. Um, just, it was, it was a very positive experience all around. I'm not going to go into a lot of the details because we, we've kind of gotten a lot of information out to everybody and we had our, our, uh, public hearing, public hearing last week that nobody came to, but that's all right. Um, anyway, we, we were basically able to give uh, raises to teachers on a level we have not seen in quite a few years um, for yeah for for a lot of reasons uh, we had an increase in students this year plus the state has increased their their funding a little bit um, but basically what we did is is everybody every teacher is getting at least two thousand dollars but some teachers are getting more based off of if they were part of the salary freezes from many years ago when um, schools all around the state were, were kind of frozen for lack of funding. Uh, we basically put people where they should be on the, the master, master salary schedule. Um, so if they've got 19 years experience, they're going to be at that 19 year level and because some of those were four, five, six levels behind. So we, in, we increased them quite a bit. Uh, we increased the amount of um, money we are putting toward um, the uh, VALIC, which is a, a retirement fund. Um, we redid our ECA schedule to uh, get some more money in those ECA areas that we felt needed to be adjusted. So um, all in all, I think it's about $470,000 um, of of more money we have put towards salaries and things like that so and that's within the budget because that's we had a very sizable increase this year so anyway that's that's all that that great news i do want to read this resolution really quickly this has to do with what is called supplemental payments basically if everybody's not getting the same exact amount you have to do this type of resolution um, and since everybody's not we have to we have to do this so i'm going to read this aloud here uh, whereas Indiana Code 20-28-9-1.5a provides that for school years beginning after June 30th, 2022, a school corporation may provide a supplemental payment to a teacher in excess of the salary specified in the school corporation's compensation plan. A supplement provided under this subsection is not subject to collective bargaining, but a discussion of the supplement must be held. Such a supplement is in addition to any increase permitted under subsection B. 
whereas the Board of Trustees of the Eastern Green School Corporation desires to pay supplemental payments to be added to the base salaries of certain teachers as is authorized by this resolution and is permitted by Indiana Code 20-28-9-1.5a. Now, therefore, the board adopts this resolution which approves the following. One, the superintendent of schools is specifically authorized to pay a supplemental payment to the teachers identified in the attached spreadsheet in the amount for each teacher specified in the attached spreadsheet. The attached spreadsheet is incorporated herein as part of this, re part of this resolution. Two, the supplemental payments authorized herein are to be applied to each individual teacher's base salary. Three, the supplemental payments authorized herein are in addition to any salary the teacher will be paid pursuant to the master, master teacher contract that is in effect between the board and the Eastern Green Teachers Organization. This resolution approved this 14th day of November 2022. So this resolution along with the um, changes to the master contract, which you've all received. Um, that is what you are voting on tonight. So my recommendation is that you approve the 22-23 uh, master contract and this resolution with the spreadsheet of all those payments. Do you have a motion? Sharon? Sure. All hands <laughs> go at the same time. Martha on the second. All those in favor? Thank you very much. Pass us 6-0. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Yep. You bet. Uh, next up, I am making the recommendation for the termination of employment of Velda Fisher as special ed instructional assistant, effective November fourth, twenty twenty-two. Motion. Natalie. A second. Heather. All those for. Passes six zero. Thank you. Next up, I am making a recommendation to hire Gretchen Morgan as the elementary assistant principal slash instruction and curriculum specialist starting January 5th, 2023. And Gretchen is with us tonight if you want to stand up and wave. <laughs> Hi. I always want to type with a slash in there, right? <laughs> yeah. Thank you for uh, approving this position and uh, thank you for having me and Mr. Richard for this Thank you, Gretchen. And you'll get to learn more about her, but she's coming to us from Monroe County, um, has, a, has a nice background in everything that we need. Uh, I think we interviewed a total of six candidates, I believe, and, and Gretchen rose to the top out of them, and it was, it was very nice getting to know her. So um, that's my recommendation. All right. Motion? Scott? Give me a second. Natalie? All those in favor? Passes six zero. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Next, we have a recommendation to hire Sarah McCandless as an instructional assistant starting November fifteenth. Motion. Scott. Need a second. Sharon. All those four. Passes six zero. Next up, recommendation to hire Elizabeth Cobb as an instructional assistant starting November 15th. Motion. Heather? Second. Chair? All those in favor? Passes 6 0. Next is a recommendation to hire Philip and Tabitha Richardson to drive Route 11 for the remainder of the year, and they're going to split that route. Motion, Scott. Second, Martha. All those in favor? Passes six zero. Uh, next, recommending to hire Haley Sullivan as an early learning center instructional assistant starting November fifteenth. Motion, Natalie. <laughs> Second, Heather. 
all in favor? Passes six zero. Next, making a recommendation to approve Curtis Moffitt as the high school soccer coach for the 23-24 season. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Curtis will do an awesome job for us. All right, a motion? Martha. <laughs> <laughs> I need a second. <laughs> Natalie. All those in favor of Kurt? Passes 6 0. I have a recommendation to approve Marissa Pfeiffer as a fifth, sixth grade volunteer cheer coach. Need a motion? Natalie? Second? Sharon? All those in four? Passes, six zero. A lot of kids. Next, uh, I have a recommendation to transfer $402.10 from the inactive middle school bookstore accounts to the student activity account. Also transferring $884.92 from the middle school FFA account to the high school FFA account. Uh, the middle school fund has been inactive since 11-6 uh, of 20. Need a motion? Martha? Second? <clears throat> Natalie? All those in favor? Passes 6 0. Long list. Yes, now we have a bunch of donations. And I've said this before, but it, it, it really kind of warms your heart when you have donations on every single uh, board agenda. So. I'll read these off here. So we have the following donations, $300 anonymously toward uh, middle school athletic recognitions, $500 anonymously toward 2023 Washington DC trip, um, 600 anonymously toward the 23 DC trip, 100 anonymously toward sixth grade girls basketball expenses, $1,000 from Jared and Dominique Barr toward sixth grade girls basketball, $100 from Southern Indiana Pediatric Dentistry to Eastern Green Bowling Club. $50 from Jeremy and Angela Inman to the Eastern Green Bowling Club. Um, $100 Perry and Renee Fowler to the Eastern Green Bowling Club. $100 Kelsey Carmichael to Eastern Green Bowling Club. $50 Inman Property Services to Eastern Green Bowling Club. $100 Karen Kane to High School Athletics for purchase of a speaker for home stands at the football field. $300, Kathy Howell to high school athletics for purchase of speaker for the home stands at the football field. Uh, $181, uh, that is donations from spectators for purchase of a speaker for the home stands at the football field. $600 from Grocery Getter Nation to be used for past due lunch accounts. I think that's it. All right. Need a motion for those? Scott? Need a second? Heather? All those in favor? Passes 6 0. Thank you. I would suggest anybody that needs to do fundraising get Alex Clary to help you yeah. because the bowling club is raking in the dough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I uh, do have just a couple late items. Um, Employment for high school baseball coach. Uh, Mr. Buskirk is recommending to approve CJ Shelton as the high school uh, head baseball coach for the 2023 season. Need a motion? Heather? Second? Sharon? All those in favor? Passes 6 0. CJ, would you stand up so everybody oh. can see who you are? I didn't realize CJ was here. Thank you, CJ. Yeah. Appreciate it. Congratulations. The floor is yours. You got something to say. Uh, more than excited to be a uh, part of the program back again. Coming back from last year being an assistant. So grateful got the opportunity to, you know, exceed my exceed my goal of being a coach because that's always been a goal since I graduated uh, high school. So I'm pretty excited. Hopefully we can bring something good back from when I was there. Well, you've got a, a good group of youngsters coming up, freshmen yep. and sophomores, that uh, oh, yes. hopefully yeah. you can. Get... I definitely see from past years. From yep. Past years, so. 
Excellent. Well, congratulations. Welcome. More donations. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we have a recommendation to approve $240 from Kelsey Carmichael toward the middle school orchestra and $100 from Robert and Debbie Martindale toward the Nancy Hacker Hunter Roberts Memorial Fund. Need a motion? Scott? Second? Heather? All those in favor? Passes 6 0. Bless you. And that is it for late items. So now we just have discussion. Uh, elementary, do you want to start? You have anything? Nothing? Bellerman. <laughs> <laughs> Vanderbilt. <laughs> Was that first first SEC win in three years for Vanderbilt? <laughs> Good job. UK football is really Good gracious job. handing out those. <laughs> All right. Thank you again. Uh, last month, Mrs. Buskirk led a STEM night here in the multipurpose room, and she had a very good turnout of students and families. It's really nice to be able to work back towards engaging our Thunderbird families in person with activities like this. And I want to thank uh, Mandy for all of her efforts on that night. Uh, we hosted our Veterans Day program last Friday. Our students led a sing-along style program for veterans and families. Students and staff also brought in stars, the names of veterans and their lives to display in the hallway outside of the gym. Our IAs and other volunteers hosted a nice preception breakfast before the concert and their effort and work is very much appreciated. I also want to give a shout out to Mrs. Drummond for all of her effort in putting that program together. It was yet another very nice opportunity to have families in our building to not only celebrate veterans, but also visit our school and see some of the work that we're doing here. Uh, last month, we held our parent-teacher conferences. Our teachers met with over 400 parents in person over the course of just a few afternoons and evenings, and the PTO provided a very nice meal for our teachers and staff, and we certainly appreciate that. The PBIS action team that we call Team SOAR has brought back the Hero Parade, which is one of my personal favorites of the things that, that we do here at Eastern Green Elementary. Each Friday we showcase these students to the rest of the student body here, as well as post to social media to recognize our students for the awesome things that they're doing while giving their Thunderbird best. You may have also noticed the mock gumball machine outside of the office on your way in. Students are rewarded for going above and beyond, doing the right thing with a gumball, and when the machine is filled, the entire school will earn a reward. And that was part of our uh, PBIS action team ideas also. And lastly, I want to welcome to our Eastern Green Elementary family, Gretchen Morgan, Sarah McCandless, and Elizabeth Cobb. Sarah will be working mostly in Mrs. Needler's kindergarten classroom, while Elizabeth will be working with Miss Murray's second grade class. Uh, since we came back from fall break, um, we reworked the instructional assistant scheduling to where every classroom has an instructional assistant in their room for the duration of their reading block and five instructional assistants per grade level for our win time. Um, both of those, Mrs. Cobb and Ms. McCandless will work at different grade levels during the win time. Um, as Mr. Provost said earlier, we're very excited to have Dr. Morgan join us after Christmas break as our elementary assistant principal, district curriculum and instruction specialist uh, Mr. Provo, Mr. Joho, and I interviewed a pretty exceptional pool of candidates, I felt like, mm -hmm. and we believe that Dr. Morgan will be an amazing addition uh, to not only our building, but to our district as well. And lastly, I would like to congratulate once again our November Student of the Month, um, Caleb Christ from Mrs. Wall's class and Macy Hawkins from Mrs. Scott's room. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. George. From the middle. <laughs> hey, I've had something on my heart for a few weeks. I got super emotional at the last at the last meeting. I've never done that when talking to people. It was heavy. So anyway, I just want to apologize for that. No need I to apologize. Should have been able to keep it together. For that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> I am. Yeah. I'm, I'm. I'm nothing but human. But anyway, I don't know why. This is. 
probably put, thought about that daily for the past few weeks. Um, thank you to the students, Rob and Erica Drummond, along with Whitney Russell and Allison Clary. The Veterans Day program was a huge success, and you can watch that on YouTube. Thank you to Michael Conley. I thought he'd be here tonight. He always keeps it real lively back here. Uh, he did a magnificent convocation on bullying and kindness for us. Um, I don't think it was recorded, um, but that was just a couple weeks ago. Seventh and eighth grade students learned a lot from him and it really got them thinking and the dialogue going because we got it all in the office afterwards. It was fantastic. I told him he could do it for a living across the nation. It was that good. Um, so thank you to Mr. Conley. I know he'd done that at the high school as well and kind of brought it down to our level a little bit. Thank you to Leslie Kimmel for taking on the spreading of kindness throughout our building. Um, she's our new counselor. From playing songs in the morning to having a video shown every Monday morning in the classrooms to doing classroom and small group lessons, she's really on top of the kindness and spreading kindness and joy. She's done a great job, so we're happy to have Leslie. Um, thank you to the eighth grade team for organizing the lip sync contest and to all adults that were involved. They raised a lot of money, and it was a lot of fun. Uh, please watch the video on YouTube if you haven't seen it. It's a hoot. It really is. I think the teachers did as much or more than the kids did with the lip sync. So a lot of fun. Teachers did a really nice job in the uh, last few weeks of getting through round one of ClearSight, our formative testing, and also round one of classroom observations. I really enjoyed the band concert and also the choir and strings concert. We had a massive turnout, as many people as I ever remember for both of those um, events. The students sounded great. Kudos to Rob Drummond, Mallory Bowman, and the students for that. Um, I really appreciate and want to formally say thank you. I've mentioned him one other time to Nathan Martindale. Uh, Nathan has gone above and beyond in his new role as middle school athletic director. He is receiving rave reviews and, and I put I, we are truly blessed to have Nathan with us. I, I mean, he is doing a lot and, and weekends too and he looks exhausted right now. He needs, he needs a break. Um, and that's all I have. Happy Thanksgiving and if you're traveling, be safe. Thanks guys. Patrick, you mentioned, uh, hang on a second, I'm not, I'm done, done. <laughs> no, so, something that I had in my scratch notes didn't make it to my printed paper, at least it reminded me the cookies and canvas from last Thursday, sponsored by the PTO, was very well attended. Um, thank you to the PTO and Mrs. Parsley for their efforts on the cookies and canvas. Thank you. I was going to say, Patrick, uh, you mentioned Mrs. Uh, Whitney Russell. And just wanted to say congratulations to her and Davis. Yes. With their new baby boy. Yes. Yep. Yes. And we are super fortunate to have Heather Talley. And, and she's done several maternity leaves. And she got in there today just like she's always been with us. So, yeah. Yeah. You, you emailed me Sunday, right? Yes. That she had had her baby. And Heather was ready to go at a moment's notice. So. Yes. She started today. Yeah. So. I feel like I've talked a lot this, this meeting. So. Um, <laughs> I'll try to be very brief. Our fall testing day on October 25th was uh, very successful. Uh, we had an 80% pass rate on our ASVAB test. That is the, the test that the seniors take. Uh, our uh, PSAT uh, was also taken that, that day. We are still awaiting scores. It should be in, I believe, on the 28th. Uh, freshmen also returned from Hoosier Hills, excited about the opportunities that, opportunities that they had, had there. I think for the first time, I could actually hear the conversations in the hallway uh, about, uh, about some of the opportunities and a little bit of uh, excitement and buzz about, uh, about some of those options. Uh, FFA uh, represented us very well at the National FFA Convention. I believe that was up in, in Annapolis. I uh, just wanted to say uh, thank you to Ms. Linville. Um, Thursday, November 3rd, uh, we had our uh, fall SWIAC athletic banquet. Uh, all fall sports were represented very well by our, our athletes and I uh, just wanted to commend all of them. That I don't even remember everybody who was, who was there. There's quite a, quite a list, um, but just really do appreciate all their, all their efforts. I uh, also appreciate Ms. Bowman, Mr. Drummond, um, and all their students. Uh, they, they put on a, a fantastic uh, uh, concert uh, this fall. Um, uh, this past Friday, we were fortunate to have several veterans recognized at our annual Veterans Day ceremony. I wanted to thank Ms. Bartlett, uh, Mrs. Bowman, and the band, Mr. Drummond, and the choir um, for all their efforts uh, in making this a, a beautiful experience. 
Um, it, uh, as I was at the, at the podium and just looking out at all the veterans, uh, it was very humbling uh, to, to just see all the experience and the sacrifice that was right before me. Um, our, our speaker uh, was Master Gunner, Gunnery Sergeant uh, Whitaker. Um, uh, he did a beautiful job and, and really tried to uh, challenge the students to, uh, to put forward their, their, their best foot and, uh, and, and, and teach them that this is the time in which you make a lot of really significant life decisions. And so really did appreciate his time uh, coming and speaking to our, to our staff and students. Best of luck to our girls and boys basketball teams this winter. Uh, the girls are off to a great start. I believe they are four and one, is that correct? All right, and uh, the boys' season starts uh, within this week, so uh, come out and support uh, both, of the, both of the teams. Next month, we are gonna begin our Friday cohort meetings, uh, just in time for uh, scheduling in our open house in January. Um, these cohort meetings are gonna be uh, with uh, the different grade levels, just kind of giving them those reminders on, on behavior, academics, uh, especially with the freshmen, how, how credits are earned, um, it's one of those things that's a huge difference from the middle school and so we're, we try to catch those those problems early and be a little bit proactive so that uh, so they have success earlier on and then uh, last but not least I would like to wish everyone a restful a restful and blessed thanks uh, Thanksgiving break uh, I'm very thankful for my staff uh, not just my teachers but uh, all the wonderful people that I work uh, work around um, mr. Provo school board um, my office staff, custodial and kitchen staff, um, my administration team, and, and then last but not least, the, uh, the great students here at Eastern Green. So I'm just very thankful. Um, I, if Mr. Provo could probably tell you I'm, I'm, a, I'm a pretty reflectful person. So if I, uh, so I, uh, I, I enjoy my job and I, I love it. And uh, uh, I can't say that all principals feel that way. Um, and so a lot of that has to do with the relationships and the people here. Um, they, really, they really make it uh, an enjoyable experience. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kirkendall. Uh, I just yes, have... Mr. Buscark. Sorry, can I? Oh, can I have please, one thing? please approach the podium so the microphone can pick you up. I just have one quick thing that I want to add to, to him for his fall sports thing. Um, fall sports GPA of 95 kids. Uh, that, that, that did some sort of fall sport, her GPA was a combined 3.4. Wow. Awesome. GPA, so very much well done in the classroom as on the fields and, and the court. That is very so good. Excellent. Add that to his notes and forgot. Thanks for sharing that. That's, that's great. Uh, I just have a few things. I always feel like I don't talk about enough because there's so many wonderful things going on, but my great admins hit, hit a ton of it. So uh, also want to say thank you to everybody that took part in the Veterans Day. Um, I was able to make it to two out of three, had a meeting for one of them, but uh, they were just awesome to see all the, all the veterans and the families there. So thanks for everybody involved with that. I uh, want to give an update on the soccer field. I said I'd uh, update everybody as that kind of uh, comes, comes to fruition. So today, uh, Mr. Kirkendall, Mr. Buskirk, and myself met with Carl Cook and Jim Murphy. Jim works for um, the cooks and their properties and he's going to be kind of somewhat overseeing the the project but uh, went out to the site and kind of did some measuring today and things like that so the next step is they're going to uh, stake off the field kind of where it's going to set and the orientation of it uh, board members you'll be able to go out there and take a look and see if if you like the way it's it's setting and, and that sort of thing and then after that, a lot of when they get started is going to depend on the weather here very quickly. Um, we have a very short window at this point to get anything done um, this now kind of winter. Um, but they might if, if, the, if the weather holds. If not, that'll be more of a spring project. But they feel like even if we start in the spring, it'll be ready to go for the, the fall season. Um, so it's, it's moving along here, and we'll, we'll see see where we get with that whole process. Um, speaking of the weather, when I talked about uh, if the weather holds off, um, just wanna urge 
parents and family members and caregivers to make sure all your information is correct in Harmony because that's where the information pulls from when, when you get my wonderful messages that I'm always so great at giving, you know, I'm just so lively on there. Um, that, that's where it pulls from. So make sure if you want to get the text messages and emails and all that stuff that all of your information is correct in Harmony. I only bring it up because we had our nice little snowstorm that we all woke up to on Saturday. It put me in a bad mood. I don't know about you guys, <laughs> but I'm not a real big snow person anyway. And it put me in a bad, new, bad mood waking up to that. But anyway, um, yeah, hopefully we don't have a lot of, of, of snow this winter, but want to make sure that we're, we're getting into that time where we could have anything at any time. What's that? I have. Yes, I've seen the forecast. So. Yep, yep. I think that's that's all I have. All right. Scott, anything from Martha? Natalie? No. Heather? Yes. I was going to say something, yeah, but you guys feel free to. I can do it. Okay, okay. All right. <laughs> but first, I need to make a clarification. As Mr. Kirkendall kept referring to Mr. Childress teaching the math and the engineering, he was not referencing me. Okay? There's a younger Mr. Childress who does that stuff. It's not me. So, uh, <laughs> not much. He's got the beard, yes. Um, Last week was election day, and I uh, just want to thank the community for getting out and, and voting, taking the time and uh, the effort to do that. And starting in January, uh, we will have two new board members. Um, my last meeting will be in December. Martha's last meeting will be in December. And Kim Waldridge and Dennis Crow will be stepping up to take our spots. And, uh, Thank you both for being willing to serve and uh, appreciate your, your community, your spirit and uh, your commitment to the school and the students. So thank you very much for, for running and for all that you're going to do over the, the next four years. So anything else? Thank you, Ron and Martha, for everything you've done. I mean, I don't know how long it's going for. Eight years. Time for me to go. <laughs> <laughs> anything else? All right, it's recommended that uh, the meeting be adjourned tonight at 8.34. Need a motion? Scott? Second? Come on, Natalie and Heather. Get some arms up there. Martha! All those four? All those four? Pass it 6-0. We're done. Thank you all for coming. Yes, thanks, everyone.